assalamu alaikum everyone and uh, welcome uh, to your next uh, economics class and uh, before we proceed today i just wanted to confirm one thing from all the students who are on board right now if you could just confirm in the comment box that you could hear me today properly if you face any problem regarding uh, the sound please do write in the comments so i could stop my lesson and i can explain and we can fix this problem for you all right so meanwhile we are going to start now uh, with today's lesson and uh, it was promised today that in our future which means today's lesson we are going to study about the market equilibrium we studied about the demand and supply last time and today our topic is actually uh, the way forward to th that topic which we did our, in our last class so market equilibrium you can see before we start to this topic i just need to get a little quick review about the demand and supply which we did last in the last class we all have been going through and we learned it well that demand is actually the willingness and ability to buy a product and similarly if we talk about supply it is actually the willingness and ability to sell something in the market today we are all familiar that the market equilibrium is where the demand and supply they are equal now if they are equal how should be able to define it yes if the demand is willingness and ability to buy and the supply is willingness and ability to sell that means that the market equilibrium which is comprising of these two economic variables we can easily define that market equilibrium is a place is a point where the willing we see the willingness and ability of buying and selling of consumers and producers in other words you can say that this is the point where you see the willingness and ability of both sellers and buyers who are willing to exchange and they have ability to exchange or trade with each other so these are a few terminologies which i am emphasizing right now just to understand the meaning of market equilibrium now our next after understanding the meaning of it we need to learn that how uh, further we should understand it for that we need to draw a graph and a schedule we are very much familiar that last time we uh, learned about the schedule of demand and schedule of supply together so we are going to combine them both together just to uh, describe market equilibrium so there is one table which I'm uh, already uh, put it on the board for you people. You can see in the center you have price of the product, which is shown in dollars from 10 to 50. And on the left side of this table, you have like quantity demand, which is actually showing the relationship which we are very much familiar with. And you can see if the price is increasing from 10 to 50, that means our quantity demand is decreasing from 500 to 100. On the last column of this table, you can see the quantity supply and relationship to its price. As the price is rising, the quantity supply is also increasing. And I hope you are all very much capable to understand this and why it's happening. Since the demand has a negative relationship, an inverse relationship, and the supply has a positive relationship with the price. The producer gets profit, so they supply more. And the consumer, they would like to buy on very low prices. So as a consumer, we should understand that, that we are always going to prefer buying more goods on a lesser price. Now, after having this, uh, all value, these all values on the table, what do we see next? There is one point where we could see that both supply 
and the demand are equal. Can you look at closely, dear students? And please guess that which that point you think has to be where the quantity, demand, and supply is equal. Yes, you're absolutely right. You can see that this is the price, $30, which shows that at this particular price, the demand and the supply are equal. Yes, so we have learned in our earlier session that where demand and supply are equal are going to show as market equilibrium, which is our today's topic. Okay, now what happens uh, if we just draw it on the graph? Because that is very important from the examination point of view. And that is the actual uh, point where we need to develop our understanding. So again, I have just uh, jot down a graph before you, some points on the board. I hope you could see them, uh, but uh, these points which have been taken with the combination of all these table values. The schedule which I have drafted before you, I'm going to, I have already taken all these values together. So just suppose that if we had the price uh, $10 and the quantity demand was 500, so you could see that at price 10, this is the price axis you can see, and this is the quantity axis. Okay, we are considering that this is quantity, demand, and supply both. So in short, we can write the quantity word over here, or sometimes we can put a very uh, small abbreviation as Q. So it's all acceptable, but we are going to make it short in the future lessons. So we'll be more frequently using the letter Q on this axis showing the quantity and this is price obviously we can put it as p over here in the future we'll be putting a p and q just showing the market equilibrium situation all right coming back again to the values at price 10 quantity demand is 500 so at 10 i've taken this point let's consider this is point a and at 20 the quantity demand is 400 so I'm taking this 20 and this 400 as point B. With the combination of 420, we got this point, dear students, point B. Similarly, at 30, we got 300, let's say at point C. And again, the more you go upward, the combinations is actually moving this way. So at 40, you got 200 quantity, and that is going to be, let's say, point D over here. And the last one is at 100, we got at price $50, we got 100 quantity. So this is the quantity 100, and this is the price 50, giving us a combination of, let's say, point E. All right, so joining all these points together, we got one curve, which we are very much familiar with, is known as demand curve. All right, so what we can do, we can put a word, a letter over here, that this is the demand curve. Okay, now same, we do the same drill with the price and the quantity supply. In price and quantity supply, you can see when the price was 10, we had the supply, quantity supply 100, so this is one point. You can name it every, any other point like point F over here. Similarly, point 20 gives us the 200. You can put it like a, a point G over here, and C is already there, and moving onward, H and let's say I. So joining all these points together is going to give us another curve, which is also known as the supply curve. Now, this supply and demand is definitely interacting at this point, which I'm highlighting for you, dear students. And this is going to give us two amounts which I can find on this curve. One on this axis and one on this axis. And yes, you can see 
this is 300 and this is 30. The 30 is actually the equilibrium price and the 300 is your equilibrium quantity. So let's put this uh, on the board as well. What do we actually call them? So 300 is the amount where both buyers and sellers are agreeing to exchange. They are equal. So this is your equilibrium quantity. And $30 is your equilibrium price. Now, dear students, this is just the base which we need to develop before we go on the actual topic that how actually the market works. So the demand and supply diagram and schedule is before you. We really need to learn that in our many questions, you might be finding these type of information every time. They might set a question for you that on this graph, how the changes and how you understand the changes of it, how this table can help you to assess that what is the question and how you could answer it. So now if you have understood this one, it is very much uh, where we could understand that we are very much capable to move onward. All right, so now the very first thing now you have understood from here is about the equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price. So let's suppose if I just raise these letters, I'm afraid that you might not be able to see on the camera, but it's okay. But at least you have understood that how the graphs can be made and how it could be depicted. Now let's suppose we are going to find out that if we have a situation where the price increases from 30 to $40. If it increases to 30 to $40, what will be the effect in the market? So we can show it both on this table and even on this graph as well. What will be the impact? Let's see. At this price, you could see that the quantity supply is actually increasing from 300 to 400, but the demand has fallen from 300 to 200. That means this situation is not an equilibrium. This is not a balanced situation. All we need to do to understand it that why, what has actually happened and how we could explain this situation if the price is rising from 30 to 40. Yes, you could see that if the supply is increasing and the demand is falling, this is going to be known as a market disequilibrium. Okay, a disequilibrium. Now, how this disequilibrium can be calculated? That is going to be that the demand was 200 and the supply was 400. So subtracting these two together, this is going to give us an amount which is 200. Now what this 200 will show, this disequilibrium is actually giving us a shortage in the market. Shortage means, sorry, it's going to be a surplus. A surplus means that you have more supply, but you have less demand. Let's put this on the graph again. If the price is rising from 300 to $40, you're going to have a line over here, which is going to decide demand that is falling to 200 from 300 to 200 and the supply is increasing from 300 to 400. So you could see that this is the difference. This is something which is increasing in the market, which we can show 
that this is the gap which is not being consumed, neither it has been sold. There is more supply in the market, S, which is greater than its demand. So when the supply is more and there is more demand, this situation is going to be known as a market surplus, dear students. All right, let's take another example. Let's say if the price is set below the equilibrium, if somebody in the market, let's say the producers, they think that the price should be set below, what will be the impact on the market? Yes, this time, this 20 price is actually giving us the demand at this, which is 200, and the supply is at, sorry, the demand would be 400 since this price 20 is interacting or intersecting this curve of demand at this point. So we will give this as a demand over here. Whereas this point is of the supply curve. So at 20, we have the 200 supply. So 200 supply and 400 demand means that demand at this point or at this price of 20 is going to be giving us a shortage, shortage of goods and services which are produced. So this whole shaded area which I'm presenting before you where the demand is exceeding its supply, this is going to be known as a market shortage. Now, it means one thing which we could learn out of this students, that is that 30 or this price is the only one which actually equates the demand and supply. But any price which is above and below the curve, below this equilibrium point, is going to give us a situation where the, either the demand is going to be less than supply or either demand is going to exceed the supply. Both the situation is going to be represented as the market disequilibrium. Now, uh, this market disequilibrium, which is occurring, how in the real life it happens? That's the best, best question which should come in our, to our mind. Is it something which is really in the books or is it really happening in the real world? Let's try that. Let's suppose if the price is hiking in the market, somebody is setting a higher price in the market. Is it going to happen like they're going to be surplus? Yes, but is the surplus is going to remain there? No, it's not going to be there. There is something that the producer has to do. And what is that? They all they need to do is to reduce their prices. So when they are going to reduce the prices, dear students, the prices will move towards the equilibrium they will lower down the prices back to its where they are both sellers and buyers could exchange. So when they are going to put down the prices at the same time, the consumer will also try to increase their demand. And let us say, take an example in the real world. Just imagine how many brands are there we see in the market at the moment. After a certain time when the producer feels that their stock is not sold, so they do realize that their prices were high, that's why they faced a surplus. So what they do then, they put up some schemes like sales. You might have seen like sales like up to 70%, up to 50%, so it means when the sales are imposed, this is the part of that real life, which actually puts the pressure on the higher prices and it puts back to its equilibrium. And you already know that, that the equilibrium price is where both are agreed to exchange. And what happens when the sellers are putting, uh, putting up all the sales on, of their stock and you see how the consumers are rushing and they are increasing their demand. It's very much obvious that whenever the price is set above the equilibrium in the market the, and there is going to be a surplus, the producers are going to act accordingly. Another one is, 
when let's say somebody has set the price below the equilibrium yes when the price is set below the equilibrium this is going to impact in such a way that usually there is going to be a shortage of goods and services just imagine if the government imposes a prices to reduce in the market let's say if the government suddenly decides that the the fuel and the petrol prices should go down so you might see that there is going to be shortage by the producers why because falling in the prices or imposing the prices such a in such a way is going to put pressure on their profits and yet they are going to reduce their supply as you can see in this diagram they have reduced from 300 to 200 but at the same time the consumers they are looking more for they are might be increasing they might be showing up their demand that they should be given more supply in the market but what happens then there's a shortage the consumers are going to even pay a higher price for this product when they are agreeing upon it again you can see that they are now going to or they are willing to pay even a higher price when they are ready to give a higher price yet producers are going to respond back and they are going to increase their supply so in the days of shortage dear students usually the consumers they raise their demand and that instigates an increase in their demand or increase in the prices and these prices when they are increased is going to increase the quantity supply together so it means that this market equilibrium eventually self stabilize or automatically stabilize in the market if the government is not there still the market economy they are going to self sustain its prices so no matter what the prices you are charging they are going to come back to a certain level where both consumers and producers are willing to exchange together all right so that's something which is all related to the market equilibrium and the market disequilibrium so two things which we are learning out of this segment right now that the market equilibrium where both demand and supply are equal and market disequilibrium is where the demand and supply both are not equal why because they are set above or below the equilibrium and how they are set you have been given some examples all right so moving on to the other side We have ten minutes. Ten minutes only. Okay. Okay. Now moving to the other side uh, of this uh, topic. This is the remaining part, and this uh, part actually explains us that how in the market the prices and the equilibrium quantity. yes so now i'll be like illustrating that how this equilibrium prices and equilibrium quantity will change in the market we see that the prices are fluctuating day by day but why it's happening why in the real world we see that the prices sometimes goes up and sometimes they go down and sometimes they remain stable as well so we need, that's all which we learn from this topic dear students so let's see how it happens the market prices how they change and how the output of the economy or the market they change or the quantity of the goods and services they change it all depends upon how the demand and supply they change so we are going to take a few cases over here to understand and before that we are going to show now in very short the graphs together over here we are going to show the prices and we can show the quantity on this side now first thing is that in this diagram if i take one example like if the demand increases but the supply remains same it doesn't change what will be the impact in the market 
This question can be set to, for you that if in the market for any commodity, let's say a mobile or a fuel or a chocolate, I'm sorry, it's chocolate. I don't have to mention that in this month. But when the demand is increasing and the supply remains the same, what will be the impact on the price of that product and in the quantity of that product? So what we are going to do, dear students, we are going to initially take a diagram in this way. Now this time, we are not going to take values. All we are going to do, we are going to show some symbols. So this D shows the demand, the negative slope curve, and this is S, the supply curve, and this is the equilibrium, which we can show with a letter E, equilibrium. And we know that equilibrium defines two things. One is price P, and the other is quantity Q. Now, considering this case, if supply remains same, which means the supply doesn't change, how the demand increase is going to affect so let's see that how demand change brings change into it. But one thing, let's have a recall. How many of you remember that the demand increase, how it should be shown on this diagram? Okay, is it going to be on this side or is it going to show on this side? I mean, is it going to increase to the right side or is it going to decrease to the left side? Right, so it's going to shift to the right side. So we are going to raise this side of demand and this is the new demand curve, which is actually increasing to the right side. So we are going to name it, let's say from D to D1. Now D1 is your new demand curve. This is the curve which is changing in the market. So this new demand curve is going to give us a new equilibrium. D1 and S is going to give us a new equilibrium and we can give it a name as, let's say, E1. So it's not visible. Uh, let's put it this way. This is E1, the new equilibrium. Now this new equilibrium is going to give us another two more values. It's going to give us a rise in the price from P to P1. And there is going to be increase in the quantity from Q to Q1. So this thing shows when the demand is changing rightward, this is going to increase the prices and yet it's going to increase the quantity as well. So now consider it with the help of any factor. Let's say why the demand would increase. We have already seen in the last lesson why the demand should increase. Maybe it can be due to the income. Maybe it could be due to the population which is increasing. And there was a list of factors. So with the help of those factors, we can find out which curve would shift. And this is how your questions are going to work on. I'm trying going to share a worksheet in a, in a, moment, in a moment with you. Uh, and then we will see how we could understand that well. And similarly, let's take another example with the help of supply this time. Now let's suppose if this time the supply is increasing, but the demand seem re remain the same. It doesn't change. Now again, we're going to put up that demand diagram and the supply diagram this way. And with the help of these two, we got one point common at point E, which is going to give us equilibrium price again. And again, we find this quantity on this axis. And now, increase in supply, how it should be? Yes. If the curve is shifting rightward from S to S1, this is going to give us a new equilibrium at point E1. And this E1 can give us a fall in the price from P to P1 but an increase in the, in the quantity which will be available to be traded. So you, you see, dear students, we have two situations, like if the demand changes and supply remain the same, or if the dem demand remains the same, but supply changes, this is how we can figure out how the, the equilibrium prices are changing and equilibrium quantities are changed. But there's one more thing which we need to find out. That is, 
we might have a scenario where we could see that the demand and supply both are increasing. Then what kind of diagram we will have? Let's illustrate that. For that, I will draw a two diagrams just for a particular reason. Dear students, just a reminder, just tell me if you could see it clearly on the screen. If you have any issues, please do write in the comment box so we could see that either you are not facing any difficulty in learning it right now. Otherwise, if you're still facing something, you could refer to our link, which we'll explain uh, in the retelecast. All right, now, dear students, the very first diagram on the top shows, I'm going to draw an increase in demand increase in supply. Now this time, we are not going to consider it with the previous supply and demand curve. We got now two new supply and demand curve and that is going to give us the new equilibrium. The previous equilibrium which gave us the price P and Q, this time, this is going to give us the new equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Now this diagram depicts that the price remained the same, but the quantity is increasing. So it means that if we have such a situation like this, that maybe due to the change in income on population, or maybe due to the increase in the technology, we can implement this kind of diagram. Now let me draw the same diagram in another way. This is something which is uh, something to think about it that why this change is different than the above diagram. So the demand is increasing from D to D1. This is your previous equilibrium and there is an increase in the supply. From S to S1. Now this is giving a new equilibrium at point E1. Now let's take a very quiet and close look at this dear students. This time the situation is changing. You see that the new equilibrium of demand D1 and supply S1 is giving us a new equilibrium at E1, but the price is falling. The price is falling. Why it's happening? Yes, this is actually happening just because that the supply was increasing more than its demand. But in this diagram, you could see that the change in both supply and demand are almost equal. When they are equal, there won't be changed that much in the prices. But why it's happening over here, since supply is changing more than the demand, and this is going to give a drop in the prices. And similarly, when you show this diagram in such a way, when the demand is increasing more than the supply, the price might rise upward. So sometimes a question can be rising to you, set for you, that let's say if the price is increasing, how come the demand would fall? That would be your answer. All right, dear students, uh, we have a little short of time. I wish I could have like uh, more time to explain you, but something which has been left over, uh, we can still discuss them. And uh, right now I had a plan to share a, a worksheet with you. If you could just refer to that quickly, if we could just look into this, there is question 51. And this is the 
your class activity, which I'm just sharing with you right, right now. So if you could just look at this, uh, perhaps you have to wait a little for that time. Okay, we are just uh, bringing into your, on your screen right now. We're almost there. We are not. The technical staff is with us. It cannot share with that with us. So dear students, uh, fine, we'll try to uh, send you in some other session, but right now the question which you will receive and a worksheet with you, that will be helpful for you. Now, if there is any question, yes, uh, we will have that session right now and we can discuss. There is one question which one of the students has raised in last time. He put up some equations over there. The equations were that uh, how, what would be the equilibrium price. Uh, for that, I must say one thing to you, that this question is out of context and out of syllabus. This is not the style that the O-level students should learn, neither in any of your past papers or neither in any of your O-level books you will find this kind of question. So it's better not to share on video with you right now, right? That it's going to make confusion for you. But as far as concerned with that child who's looking for it, fine. Maybe someday we can sit down together one-to-one -to -one, and then I can explain it to you. So thank you very much for being very patient and listening to the economics lesson. So tomorrow we are going to have something which is continuing to this one, or we'll perhaps I'll try after having your feedback uh, today is in the comment sections. And then maybe we can continue with this tomorrow due to the short of time, which we couldn't manage it today. So have a good day. We're going to take a short break and then we'll come back after five minutes.